So welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm in Corganville, it's near Simi Valley, California. This is the location where they filmed a number of TV shows. But this location is the place that was founded by actor Ray Crash Corrigan. In 1937, he purchased this beautiful facility. He decided to build his own house here. And he decided to use all these sandstone structures back here, these beautiful mountains to film a lot of Westerns. He also had a town out here called Silvertown. On weekends, kids would come out. Of course, in the 1950s, cowboys and Indians were real big. So they would come out and they would be entertained by the cowboys and get to ride on the horses and they would get to be locked up in jail even. It was a pretty cool place, reminiscent of Knott's Berry Farm. 1970s, wildfires took out this place and then westerns went by the wayside. Mr. Crash Corgan sold this to Bob Hope. This became Hopeville. Just about the only structure that's out here. These were the stables. These were the horse stables. Our kids would look in here and see the cowboy horses here. You still see the rocks on the front. I don't know how far back this goes, but at least probably back to the 50s. Looks like this may have been where you tied up your horse. The foundations still remain. There was a row of buildings over here. On this side were stores, saloons. Right about here were Pat Brady and Roy Rogers filmed scenes for their TV series. The Roy Rogers and Dale Evans show. This was the saloon right over here. Ray Crash Corrigan would come out here on the weekends as well. He loved to greet people. He loved to sign autographs. I have an autographed picture that was taken right here on this street where he's sitting on his horse right here in front of these buildings that no longer exist. That's sad. You come out here and think about the tens of thousands of kids and families that would go up and down the street here. Occasionally they would do something wrong. They would get locked up by the marshal in the jail over here. Look at this slab of the jail still exists. The buildings and people are gone. It's crazy to think this place was just bustling with a lot of activity. Corrigan befriended Clark Gable and the two went quail hunting on this property, 2,000 acres in size, and later Corrigan bought it in 1937. And he built his own home here, and he decided to make it into a movie ranch. And he did, and filmed a lot of movies out here. In fact, John Ford brought John Wayne out here to shoot Ford Apache, at least part of it here. A lot of it was shot out in Utah. All sorts of TV personalities would make appearances here, including Max Terhune and the two actors from Rin 1010. At Corrigatville, families enjoyed stage gunfights in the streets, rides aboard stagecoaches, and boat rides on the Robin Hood Lake. I may have misspoke. I think this over here was actually the saloon. <laughs> I'm not a rocket scientist, but uh, that's got all the earmarkings of a bathroom facility right here. This wasn't the saloon. This is where you had to go after the saloon. Now I've heard about this tree, this mighty tree over here. It's one of the last mighty oaks that was out here. It's a valley oak. Here's also a, a remnant of of this facility. This rock fence right here. This was the entry point for Corrigatville. All your little cowpokes and cowgirls would come through this gate with your parents on the weekend. 
be entertained by nice cowboys and the mean cowboys. Check out those wagon wheel gates. You would have parked your car out here and you would have gone into Corrigandville all excited. It's like you're stepping back in time. No telling how many families came through here in the 1940s and 50s. Of course, you know, back in the day, cowboys were a big thing. And then along came the 60s. And what stole the imagination of American kids? Space travel. Left cowboys and Indians in the dust. There is one additional member of this expedition, an environmental control robot, key among whose many vital functions will be the final analysis of the physical environment of the new planet. Look at that, folks. We got a piece of Corrigan history here. It's not going to come out of the ground, but brick. Brick right there. Here we go. Here is a picture. That looks like Pat Butchman right there. Doing a gunfight on the streets of Silvertown, 1964. Yep, that is Pat Butchman. Mr. Haney from Green Acres TV series. Corrigan had his house over here in this part, this western side. You know, it seems like America had more places to entertain families back in the day. Uh, I did a show on the uh, Pollardville, which is up in Stockton, California. Uh, kind of a, like this attraction, cowboy old west attraction. Went by the wayside. Then there was uh, Frontier Village in San Jose. It was a place like this. It was great fun. I remember that place. It was so cool. It's gone. Seems like what they do is tear out the fun places and build condos. And uh, what do you have left for the kids to do? Well, they sit at home and play video games all the time. I don't think that's very healthy. I'm sure there were some gift shops out here. This floor does not look even at all. We're gonna mosey on up here and uh, take a look where they filmed Fort Apache with John Wayne. So in the countryside that would have been prime for Westerns way back, you know, when I was a child, We now have houses over there. Beautiful houses backing up to this area. I have no idea what this said because it's been sun bleached, but uh, I think this is right where they filmed Fort Apache. And now, gentlemen, this gallant soldier, this member of the greatest cavalry force that ever lived, We'll show you Yankees how to ride. Now you see how easy it is, gentlemen. Gentlemen, to your horses. Who will be the first volunteer? It would be kind of impossible for buildings here to remain for too long because, as you know, Southern California with the Santa Ana winds, it's always bringing fires sweeping through here, taking everything out with them. So it doesn't surprise me that nothing's lasted. Apparently, this is the old road that led to the filming sites up the hill here. Even nature is trying to reclaim it as well. A little flower growing up in the road that used to be here. Now this, this slab here was a slab for a movie soundstage apparently. I'm not sure what they shot out here, but they probably filmed some indoor scenes here. And check it out. Fake decorative brick is still here. It's just a brick veneer. Who knows how many Hollywood legends did their 
thing right here. And I understand that right over here was a church. So if that tunnel looks familiar, it's because they filmed a number of movies back in the 40s here. This tunnel goes back to, I believe, the early 1900s. It was cut through the mountains, and Abbott Costello filmed a movie here. I think it was Keystone Cops meet Abbott and Costello, or Abbott Costello meet Keystone Cops. Lou Costello and Bud Abbott filmed the scene right here, where Bud almost gets his butt creamed right here. right here in this location. I always think it's cool when we find movie history, especially dating back to the 40s. But, uh, there was also a lot of TV shows. Jungle Jim was shot out here. Right here, this says this is the Sherwood Forest Oak Grove. The 1950s TV series Robin Hood was filmed here. So if you remember them doing a lot of galloping through here, this would be the location. This would be a nice place to live. I can imagine a house right here. If an oak tree, oak limb didn't fall on you. Let's see what this plaque here says. Okay, it talks about blasting holes that the train tunnel that we just visited was uh, broken up. They would drill these holes in it and put blasting powder in these holes to help blow the rock out of that. There's a man-made lake here. Then I understand that they shot, I think it was Jungle Jim, I don't think it was Tarzan series, that uh, they put some underwater cameras so they could show him diving in the water and swimming around. Here it be. man-made lake. I believe it dates back to the 40s or 50s. A little lagoon here. I'm not sure if they swam around in this or what the deal is. In June 1961, Robin Hood Lake was visited by the legendary film director John Ford to shoot a segment for How the West Was Won. Ford had assembled nearly 200 uniformed Union artillerymen, half a dozen horses, and 30 ready-to-blast cannons for the shot for a montage for the Battle of Shiloh. Okay, I see the building. There's a structure up here. Looks like it's part of a uh, bridge. And there's a concrete bunker that they put under the ground and had windows so that they could shoot through the window into the water and see the actors swimming in the water after they dove in. This is actually the place where they would jump in the water off of that diving platform there. Let's go up there and take a look at it. Check it out. They use rock and they cemented, use their old chicken wire techniques to gunite the surface of it. So they would dive off this for the movie or TV show, whatever they were filming here. <laughs> Boy, if you're into 50 nostalgia, this would be a very cool place for you guys to check out. I don't kill myself first. And I told you earlier about the little portals that they use for filming. I wonder if it looked real. I, I can't imagine this looking very real on TV. But maybe it did. 
As you can see, these are all rusted out. Well, I don't know how they even got in there. I think they got through the top. They must have got through the top. A lot of people have graffitied it. But there's your holes. You would have stuck the camera in here. Interesting, huh? Where they would have dropped in. Let's see if this sign tells us a little more. Okay, it was a concrete pool built for the water scenes in the movies filmed here at Corrigan in the 1940s to 60s. Creature from the Black Lagoon, Jungle Jim, and the African Queen are just a few of the movies filmed at this location. Now, it's interesting that they have these pipes. I would imagine it's retrofitted to keep those from crumbling in. There is a typical western looking rocks up there. It's pretty cool that they have these little signs occasionally to kind of telling you what is what here. Now, just over that rock there is the filming location for Fort Apache. It's strange to think that, you know, all the people who were here filming movies back in the day are all dead. I don't think one of them still lives. This worn out sign says this was Canyon Rock. Um, can't even read it, but it figures prominently in some TV shows. Fighting for space. Oh, it talks about the tree versus the rock. The rock came first, obviously. Trailblazer Cave was right here. It was uh, a clever fake. The right side had been built up from plaster and cement, shown here at the cave's front entrance. From left to right are Bob Steele, Hoot Gibson, and Ken Maynard. Wow, those are some pretty big names. Let's see if there's any remnants here of what they built up here. I don't see anything. So this would have been the cave right here. They boxed this part in, made a cave out of it. Fake! Hollywood is good at faking stuff. Ted and Rob were here though. Hoot Gibson and Kent Maynard were pretty big stars back in the day. And you know, they weren't that glamorous. Of course, I don't think Neville Brand was very glamorous either. He, he looked the part though. Man, how many times have you seen desperados perched up there with their guns or maybe picked off at the top and falling down onto mattresses? Go ahead, make my day. I think I could get a park. <laughs> oh, different genre, different era. We're talking gun smoke and bonanza here, not Dirty Harry. Corrigan was born in 1902 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and entered films as a stuntman in 1932. Because he owned a gorilla suit that by today's standards is laughable, Corrigan was put to use as a movie extra in Tarzan movies in the 1930s. No Tarzan movies or TV series were ever filmed in Corriganville. However, the lake was associated with the TV series Jungle Jim and Robin Hood. 
In 1936, Corrigan signed with Republic Studios. Crash Corrigan appeared in about two dozen Three Musketeers movies as Tucson Smith, writing alongside Max Terhune, Bob Livingston, and at times John Wayne. Between 1937 and 1943, the Three Musketeers soared in popularity. Well, we're nearly home, boys. 3M will look mighty good after that set two in Santa Fe. Don't forget, we've been away three months. Most likely, they'll have to dig it out from out of the dust. That is if the moths have left us anything to dig out. What happened to Corriganville when parks like Knott's Berry Farm just took off? In 1954, his divorce affected the park, followed by a long period of negotiation over the community property that included Corriganville. The personal drama relating to his contentious divorce that began in 1954 also damaged his popularity. Corrigan and his three detectives had burst into Rita's apartments and found her with another man, Moses Stiltz, who was the ex-foreman of the Corrigan Ranch. There was also the matter of a harrowing 80-mile-an-hour car chase between Corrigan and Stiltz, which ended with both men threatening to file assault with deadly weapon charges at each other. In court, Corrigan and his wife accused each other of having affairs with workers at the ranch. The opening of Disneyland in 1955 also sucked the air right out of Corriganville, thwarting a promised large-scale development and improvement of the ranch. Corrigan continued to operate his ranch, however. Other factors also contributed to the demise of Corriganville. The Simi Valley 118 Freeway, now the Ronald Reagan Freeway, was built through the ranch during the mid-1960s. After eight years in the courts, Corrigan and his ex-wife Rita had agreed to sell Corriganville for $1.8 million in 1963. Bob Hope purchased the site in 1965 and ran it as Hopeville for a year before it closed. By 1976, an annual two-day motorcycle race was the only event staged at Corriganville. Most of the buildings on the ranch burned in fires in 1970 and 1979. In 1986, a developer bought the ranch and made plans to build condominiums or an industrial park on the site of Silvertown. However, the city of Simi Valley purchased about 200 acres, including the Silvertown site, for a park in 1988. The Corriganville Regional Park opened in 1998. At age 59, Corrigan was out of the amusement park and movie business. He continued to operate a number of successful businesses and moved to Brookings, Oregon, where he died on August 10, 1976, in a mobile home following a heart attack at the age of 74. He was laid to rest at the Inglewood Park Cemetery. I sure hope that you enjoyed our little rewind of history and learned a little bit more about Corrigan Town if you never knew anything about it. If you have been here before, we'd love to see your comments about this place. I was not fortunate enough to be able to visit as a kid. Uh, it would have closed when I was four years old and I certainly wouldn't have remembered even if they brought me here. So we'd love to have a comment to kind of reflect what you remember about this place. If you could also give us a thumbs up and a like, well, the same thing, aren't they? <laughs> also, if you could subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, we would appreciate that as well. Thank you so much.